Good morning, Chair Garrison, Vice Chair Jocks, Ranking Member Woodson, and members of the committee. My name is Taylor Hatch, and I have the true honor of serving as a director for the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is a pleasure to present to you today to highlight from Governor DeSantis's focus on Florida's future budget for fiscal year 24-25 for our agency. Before I begin, I'd like to start by thanking the governor and the legislature for the continued support, your continued commitment and leadership in prioritizing Floridians with unique abilities by providing resources to best support this sacred population that we have the honor of serving. I would also like to thank our providers, our stakeholders, and many partners throughout the entire state for their passion, for their dedication to serving our clients. As a system, we are focused on empowering individuals to thrive. To deliver on this commitment, we are working to build upon our strong foundation of core service delivery model, historically based on crisis response to a posture that will increase opportunities to serve individuals and their families at the earliest moment possible. Leading the way in amplifying these efforts, the governor's recommended budget directly supports the individuals and families we serve by funding multiple key pathways, strategies, and initiatives. This includes 79.6 million to serve new enrollees onto our traditional and most recognized pathway, which is the home and community-based uh, waiver called the iBudget Florida waiver. This provides a variety of behavioral, medical, social, and therapeutic services for eligible individuals. The focus on Florida's future budget also recommends 6.5 million to continue the investment in teaming models to serve individuals with developmental disabilities with co-occurrence of mental health diagnoses. In partnership with Secretary Harris and the Department of Children and Families, this pilot includes a co-response from subject matter experts in both behavioral health and developmental disabilities as a part of the existing mobile response team framework. We are incredibly thankful for the funding that was provided last year to fund this effort in Orange and Broward counties. This recommended funding for fiscal year 24-25 allows the continuance of this pilot program in those counties I just mentioned and also expands into Leon and Hillsborough counties. The governor's budget also recommends 800,000 to engage subject matter experts for the development and implementation of a new and additional pathway called the Adult Pathways Waiver to serve Floridians with developmental disabilities. This waiver aims to support individuals by providing key services as they transition into adulthood and achieve greater independence and empowerment by providing necessary supports and services to meet varying levels of need, again, at the earliest moment possible to influence outcomes relating to health, safety, and well being. Currently, individuals who apply for services offered through APD but who do not meet the crisis designation are placed in a pre enrollment prioritization category based on their individual circumstance. We know from our data that the average age that individuals are, are enrolling onto the iBudget waiver in the last two fiscal years through a crisis designation is 26 years old. Our data also shows that individuals that are ages 23 to 59 make up about 51% of the individuals in pre-enrollment. We also know that individuals that are ages 15 to 22 make up about 29%. This data, along with feedback directly provided from families all across our great state, both illustrate and highlight the need to ensure that we are preserving high school graduation for the exciting time that it should be for all Floridians. And this is to support the continuum of key services post-graduation. Specifically, working to ensure there is not a gap in skill attainment and tapping into services that empower individuals to thrive as they transition to adulthood. The recommended funding will support necessary subject matter expertise, including an actuarial analysis to be incorporated as a part of a waiver submission, which will specify the capped amount per individual available for services. Eligible individuals 
would include those who are currently in specified pre-enrollment categories that are 21 years of age or at the point of attainment of a high school diploma and who are eligible for Medicaid. The next item is a direct effort to ensure a thriving workforce, respond and support our incredible existing providers and encourage provider development within the system of care. The governor's recommended budget includes $60.2 million in funding for I-budget waiver rate increases for providers of the following services. A 10% increase, which equates to an additional 2.6 million for supported living coaching services to ensure individuals living in their own homes have a thriving provider network to gain and obtain the skills needed to live in their own home. A 10% increase, which equates to an additional 1.5 million for therapeutic services, including occupational, physical, respiratory, speech therapy, specialized mental health, and dietitian services. A 5% increase, which equates to an additional 16.4 million for all levels of life skill development services, which includes companion, supportive employment, adult day training, and pre-vocational services. A 5% increase, which equates to an additional 34.8 million for residential habilitation services for individuals served in specified community-based licensed living settings. And finally, also included is a 9% increase, which equates to an additional 4.8 million for private duty nursing to ensure our rates are competitive. The governor is also recommending 709,000 to implement a workforce development apprenticeship program for direct support professionals that serve as our frontline team members working directly with our clients. These funds will support train the trainer sessions utilizing existing certified curriculum for interested I-budget waiver provider agencies per funding availability. Additionally, these funds will cover the costs for the direct support professional to attend the training and provide a pay bonus for direct support professionals who successfully complete the program and gain that corresponding credential. We have heard and what I have seen and witnessed firsthand from providers who are already currently utilizing this apprenticeship model is that it has evolved into quite the leadership academy. Uh, the participants have gained invaluable skills and created a career path which future supports the system of care. And to support individuals, to support families and provider development in rural areas of opportunity, the governor is recommending $350,000 to conduct a fiscal analysis to determine the funding needed to support a rate differential in these designated counties, in these designated areas, excuse me. This effort aims to support existing and spur future provider development. Members, we are so grateful to the governor for including these items and many more in the budget recommendations for fiscal year 24-25 to ensure Floridians with unique abilities and their families have access to resources and supports to achieve their God-given potential to thrive. Thank you again for the opportunity to present and again for your continued support of our agency, the system of care, and most importantly, the people we serve. Thank, Thank you, you, Director Hatch. Members, any questions? So, members, keep it tight and keep it moving. Representative Bartleman, you are recognized. Yes, that, that's a great presentation, and I also want to thank you for the increases for the OTPT speech and language, because even if you took everyone off the waiting list, we don't have enough people to work in those categories, so that'll help. My question is more about um, independent living and independent living facilities. Currently, one in 36 uh, children are identified on the autism spectrum and depending on where they are on that spectrum, they may or may not be able to live independently. So the country right now has a bubble of children that are going to age out. Their parents are going to pass away at one point, at some point, hopefully they live long lives. But is there any, are we, you talked about it, but is there any forecasting to what we are going to need to do as a state to ensure that we have healthy spots for independent living, healthy, happy places for them to go for independent living, because we can't, as the bubble moves, we can't, I don't want to be in a race to build it. So what is your planning in terms of the data you have right now on the, on the individuals with disabilities? You're recognized. 
Thank you for that question. I think you highlight a really important point, um, and it is one that our desired state and what we are moving towards as an agency is to work with the families we serve and the individuals that we serve at the earliest moment possible so that we can plan for those needs of tomorrow. I think I highlighted uh, something called the Adult Pathways Waiver. I think that's an example of that pathway that will, will help support that individual as they're transitioning and embracing life's next milestones. Um, some of those other milestones are, again, you look across the journey of someone's life, those provide additional opportunities. We had uh, the chance to launch uh, Hope Florida, a pathway to possibilities at the end of September. That has afforded us another pathway and again, opportunity to wrap our arms around the families that we serve, lift up the community that is around that individual to provide that, that mentor, that peer, to help meet the needs again at the local level and I think it's pathways like that that we need to continue to develop um, to meet individual needs because every every person is different, so it makes the world a very beautiful place, right? And so we want to embrace that. We know every family is different, and we want to wrap our arms around those individuals and the families that we serve and create those pathways based on those unique needs. No, ma'am, we're going to move. Um, any other questions? Rep. Savanto. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks for that great presentation. So I hope this is not a dumb question. The $60.2 million, is that being put in place to ensure that there are service providers once the, K, the Medicaid waiver support coordinator writes a plan? Because that's, that's been an issue. Thank you for the question. Um, the amount that I highlighted for provider increases are to support the providers that are providing those direct services. Um, I think that there's a couple things I'd like to highlight there. Um, some of those rate increases coupled with the rate differential for our rural counties, just again, trying to think about, we want a thriving system and all of the individuals that, that work within the system, it's really important that we lift them up, we support them in any way possible. Funding is one way that we can do that. And so that's why we're so appreciative of the funds that have been invested. Representative Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you for this presentation. It's so wonderful to see you again. Um, in regards to the budget, is there any funds that are allocated towards marketing? I know based on our discussion off, off, off camera, we, we know that you guys are doing so many wonderful things, but a lot of times we're seeing that the messaging, um, the marketing side is needed to upkeep so that folks know that this is available to them. Has the, the governor allocated any funds towards that? You're recognized. Thank you for that question. And I could not agree with you more that you can have the best thing in the world if nobody knows about it, what good is it, right? And so we have talked a lot about that internally and I enjoyed visiting with you as well um, about a corporate communication plan that touches everything from the website to our social media to the way that we are, we are talking about the services that we provide and embedding ourselves in the local community with both our traditional partners and non-traditional partners. Um, specifically in this budget, there, there's not funding that is directly for those efforts, but that doesn't mean that we are not planning to go on a full-on blitz when it comes to all things communication to make sure, again, you know, the best thing in the world, but if no one knows about it, what good is it? Any other questions? None. Thank you, Director Hatch. We greatly appreciate you. Thank, Thank you for what you, you. do. Thank you, sir. Secretary Weida.